Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight. My name is Rachel Granowig, and I'm just so thrilled to have you here for my senior capstone presentation. The first piece or segment of my capstone is part of my master's audition tape. Um, I auditioned to be a graduate student at Fresno State and was accepted into their vocal performance program. This first piece is called Je veux vivre, or I want to live. It's from the opera Romeo and Juliet. And it's the reason I chose this piece is because Juliet is a young girl and she wants to live her life and experience love and all the beautiful things that um, being an adult in life has to offer. And I think that's just apropos to anybody's senior year in college, just the excitement of what lies beyond the life of a college student. Now that we have our degrees, what's next? And so I hope that you enjoy that spirit when you listen to Je veux vivre. Yeah. 
This next segment of my senior capstone is an original composition. What began as an assignment in Dr. Imara's studio composition class last fall has turned into this huge, well, I shouldn't say huge, it has turned into something that I never would have imagined it turning into. Um, I was encouraged by Dr. Imara and Alicia Taylor and uh, Dr. Mel Goldberg to submit it to the Cal State San Marcos Symposium for Creative Works. And I did, and I was one of the finalists, which was just incredible. I'm so thankful and so humbled again. It's my first composition, so I was very thrilled to be able to share that with others. And uh, it goes on into the finals um, on May 1st. Of course, you'll be seeing this <laughs> past that, so I can always give an update, but as I film this, the finals have not yet happened. Um, so I'll be competing statewide with all of the Cal State University students who participated in this symposium. So I'm very much looking forward to that. So without further ado, I will play the video that was submitted to the symposium. And it ex includes an explanation about what my composition is about um, and the composition itself. So I hope you enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Granowick. I am a senior at Cal State University San Marcos, and today I am thrilled to be able to share my creative work with you. When you think of or hear the word protest, some of you might immediately think of the Black Lives Matter movement marches that happened towards the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Others may think of the famous marches that happened during the civil rights movement or even women's rights march. While these are all completely valid and important forms of protest, I would submit that there are other methods of protest, one of which includes the art of the protest song, which is woven into the fabric of our country. I had the honor and privilege to be a founding member of the inaugural Clark Atlanta University and Cal State San Marcos HBCU exchange program. Our theme was songs of protest, resistance, and compassion. During my time in this cohort, I did a myriad of research and listening to songs of all sorts of genres. My conclusion is that the most moving form of protest song is that of compassion. The idea behind compassion is simple enough, right? It's having sympathy or pity for someone. I think there's a deeper level of compassion, however, that involves not only having pity for someone that might not be off as well as you, but to have compassion for someone who oppresses you. I'll say that again, to have compassion, to have pity, to have sympathy for someone who oppresses you, who dehumanizes you. This notion is the foundation behind my creative work. I wrote an original song and also did the vocals for it. The song is titled, You is Kind, Smart, and Important. Those of you who have seen the movie The Help may be familiar with this iconic line. If you have not, I highly recommend you see it. The movie The Help starring Viola Davis, who plays A.B., who is a maid or the help during the, the civil rights movement, 1963 in Jackson, Mississippi. And the impetus behind my piece was the very the very last scene that breaks everyone's heart and um, A.B. is being wrongly fired and she has to say goodbye to Mae Mobley who is this little girl who she's basically been mom to this whole time and I think to be mom or to play that mammy role during the Jim Crow era um, to to take care of and raise and love a child, and not just any child, but the child of someone, of the very people who dehumanize you, that make you use the restroom outside, who fire you, who just dehumanize you left and right. I think that is the ultimate form of compassion. And so I'm gonna play a little snippet of that scene for you right now. Don't go, baby. Baby, you need to get the back to bed. Isn't I got to, baby. I am so sorry. 
Are you going to take care of another little girl? No, that's not the reason. I don't want to leave you. But it's time for me to retire. You're my last little girl. No! Baby. Baby. I need you to remember everything I told you, okay? Okay. You remember what I told you? You were kind. You were smart. You were important. That's right, baby girl. We are still, to this day, wrestling with what it means to be Black in America. As a Black woman, I make the conscious choice every day to use my art and my God-given gift of music to peacefully and nonviolently protest. I'm not the only one. Why do you think that is? I believe it's because deep down, instead of seeking vengeance, we hope that by modeling this behavior to those in positions of privilege, that they one day too will see the light and choose to act from a place of compassion. I humbly present to you, you as kind, smart, important. was my last baby. In just 10 minutes, the only life I knew was done. God said we need to love our enemies. It's hard to do, but it can stop by telling the truth. See, nobody had ever asked me before how it felt like to be me. Once I told the truth about that, I felt free. Last but not least, I would be remiss to not address some of the difficult parts of my senior year, but I'm hoping that I address it in a way that's meaningful and that other people can resonate with. So my senior year, as many of my comrades and classmates, was rife with COVID-19 strife. And amidst the COVID-19 strife, 
there were a lot of battles with protests, in particular Black Lives Matter protests, which is a movement that is very dear and important to my heart. And I was wrestling with a way to process all of these needless deaths and just the division in our country. And so I wrote a mashup, um, or a medley, if you will, of the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, with the classic Sam Cooke tune, A Change Is Gonna Come. I think those tunes melded together have really helped me to have hope that one day a change will come, and that in order for that change to come, one of the ways that we can come together is to lift our voice, whether in song or in speech or whatever our gift is to promote unity in such a divided world right now. So I just want to thank you again for being here this evening. I am so blessed to have been able to be a music major at Cal State San Marcos. I want to thank my family, um, my husband, my mom and dad, my brothers for all of their support and love. Even though we haven't been able to be together during the pandemic, their undying love and support is palpable and I wouldn't be here without them. So without further ado, I'll close out my capstone and I wish you and yours health, love, and safety for the rest of 2021 and beyond. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as the Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. march on till victory is won
said it's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. My name is Tristan Godino, aka Centris, and this is a collection of work that most people either have only gotten to see once, if they get to hear it or see it at all, and that's personally something that I'm working on, is although I've come to accept who I am and what I'm about, I've come to accept that there's going to be people that'll judge you even if you give them nothing to judge you about. I've always been unapologetic, but for some reason, I've always said sorry to myself for the work that I've done. So today, I'm done saying sorry, and I'm here to share with you. So this first song came to me from just really working out inner conflict through meditation which of course is pretty a pretty I think cliche thing to say but in looking into being a mute and trying to further my my knowledge and to further my culture and to fur further everything uh, that I stand for I started to pick up on other languages one of them being Icelandic this derives from Gamanadhita Thig, which means nice to meet you. I'm not very good at having holidays, but this kind of thing. I, I think I'm a very sort of 24-7 kind of person. Your creativity does it thrive more on chaos or more on discipline? thing about growth is that uh like i said in the beginning of the video it the title is derived from the saying in icelandic thing, which means nice and i again through me through meditating through thinking about what you know this means and you know just kind of doing the typical human thing of like you know oh i want to make this you know a cool one word thing i took gaman um you know which i thought meant like nice and just put it for the song title because I thought the song sounded nice and but like I said with growth uh, come to find out that uh, gaman is something in Japanese culture that describes the fortitude and the longevity through suffering and seeing the growth in that and that was something that was really weighing heavy on me at the time so that's where this song came about uh, and, it, and it pushed me to pull out a lot of my old video production habits that I used to do in the filmmaking that I would do. So um, I just have to do more of that. But with that, uh, I, you know, just taking things further, taking the growth further, I did even deeper self-inflection with the things that I noticed from uh, being silent and, and seeing other people do things that I would end up typically saying or doing. And it and it pushed my self-awareness 
that much further if, if it was even there at all um and so this song is about uh i guess just calling not only myself but other people out on this so Imagine every distraction as time lapses A dream that doesn't retain traction My facets of being are all in my works Who's the first to get it? Some couldn't handle the sound bites like Oops mentioned I've been thinking about my time on this earth What it means to me, all the hurdles faced since birth But that don't really mean shit At a point we conceded Thinking you all the time, always finding a reason The region, region, we don't need this, need this time to sink in to the deep end, deep end But there was a better way Look to a nice day By chance it came I saw the price tag Took it, then ran away Spending all the time inside In a ride business Intention with no cosign My mind is used to illusions Euthanize the old me It was causing confusion Truth to whoever's losing Feeling like I got myself right this time I really stop, really feel like I'm trying to Keep mostly to myself But INFP means all I do is help Shelved all these tentative thoughts Separated like commonwealth Brought you some common sense But a lot makes a difference Can't you tell? I'll be honest I'll be honest Every single day Some attempt to be modest Masking the fact that they actually self-conscious We keep it moving, show understanding Now you're the target So just a quick afterthought about that song uh, The song title is INFP Which is uh, a classification of personality type Based on the Myers-Briggs Meyer Briggs uh, personality test and uh so that that was just a little fun fact i'm i'm a pretty uh you know idealistic person uh so that kind of came out in in that song a little bit uh, but to kind of push things ahead um in terms of video edits and and the things that i used to do this this next song came about from being out here in San Marcos for a bit and still struggling with kind of putting myself back uh, into a normal headspace and a friend of mine who I used to work with had uh, hit me up and I finally just took the chance and was like you know what, I'm just gonna leave the house and I had my, my phone with me which I used to record something just told me hey just record stuff you know, I asked me, could I, can I get some video? And it was just really inspiring to see them just have the time of their life and remind me what that's like. And, uh, so this one's for them and, uh, I hope you enjoy it. things up i just want to say thank you to everybody for dealing with my ranting and my raving uh, and thank you very much for watching this far uh, to end things off i want to share with you my latest work that i did with somebody out in the uk 
and she is awesome. She's got that queen energy. She's out here making moves, and I'm super proud to be working with her and to be part of this project. This is a song called The Healer that was done basically over Zoom, and it came from a bedroom session that Eve, um, the person that I'm working with, did a little um, a little like YouTube beat rap thing that she wrote, and I got inspired. I loved it. I hit her up. I was like, hey, let me, you know, get you your own version of this song so you can put it out on your own. And it turned from a musical Zoom project into getting uh, Sebastian Krolak, who did the, the Conjuring movie, and just making this music video happen with edits and everything. So I did the sound design for the intro and the ending. I did the production on this beat. And I hope you enjoy the healer. This marks the end of this journey that I took you on. I'd first and foremost like to thank God, my friends, my family, those that have supported me and took the time to actually listen, even if it wasn't my music, even if it was just something that I was saying. 
whether negligible or unimportant or any of the subjective things that we have to offer. But again, I want to say thank you, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. The first piece I'll be performing is an arrangement of Summer Over the Rainbow, one of the best songs ever created, I think. I incorporated jazz harmonies into this version to give it a rich and dense tone while still keeping it beautifully melodic. These next pieces are part of an avant-garde series I composed using musical dice. I used dice to determine the notes while I just had control of the rhythms and length of the notes. At the end of the second movement, there's even three random notes played live, so every performance will theoretically be different.
the final piece I'll play is a lot more grounded than the last two. It's a combination of a piece I wrote in high school with a similar piece I've written recently to make one full creation. It has a rich harmonic bass with beautiful melodies on top, sometimes even two distinct melodies played simultaneously.
The final composition I'll be playing is called Mole Music. I wrote this piece for an orchestra and a narrator. The narrator reads the children's book, Mole Music, while the music progresses. This piece is performed by the Miracoska Symphony Orchestra, narrated by Brandon Mirison, and conducted by myself. supper in front of the TV and then went to bed. One night, on the television, a man played the violin. He made the most beautiful music Mole had ever heard. I want to make beautiful music too, Mole said to himself. the strings, but instead of beautiful music, all he made was a horrible screeching sound. <laughs> Mole tried again. The violin still screeched, but not quite so horribly. Mole kept at it. After about a week, he could play one note, then two. And before a month went by, he could play an entire scale. Mole continued to practice.
He learned to put the notes together into a simple song. imagined himself playing before a huge audience. imagine that his music could reach into people's hearts and melt away their anger and sadness.
laughed at himself. How silly am I, he thought, imagining that my music could do all that when no one had ever even heard it. Then he put down his violin and went to sleep. 